Ich bin Judendichter. Ich schreibe Hebräisch. Ich kotev Ivrit. Du fragst, warum schreibe ich Hebräisch in Berlin? Voila, lo yodea. Ich kann nicht schreiben gut Englisch oder natürlich kein gut Deutschen. Vani ger becha. Und was du denke, wo ist dein Herz mit meinen Worten? Weifo atagar achshav ben amilim ha'ele? Ich bin ein Lachmann. Ich bin schlecht Juden, Immigrant von Irak. Ich bin Juden und ich bin Arabisch. Und warum kein viele Hebräisch in deiner Stadt, aber so viele andere Immigrant? Ich weiß. Ich weiß. Und jetzt, jeden Tag, ich frage, das immer fragen. Und du sagst, bitte, wir können tanzen und nicht vergessen. Aber kashelir kod, kashayesh betocha beten, sefer Torah boer, velo ukali. Toda raba. Martin, can I do a Polaroid picture Please. of you? Yeah. With the book? Yeah. Great. <laughs> Will you sign it afterwards? I promise. Welcome to Nobel Corona Art Stories and welcome Mati Shmuelov, my good friend, who has just been reading a poem from his poetry book that came out. Yeah, my first German book, Baghdad Haifa Berlin. I really love the book. It's, it's just the, the poem that you read is sort of a, yeah, a, 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 an example for this whole idea of the book with this coming from three cultures yeah. and with three cities in the title. Um, yeah, I wrote the, 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 um, I, I wrote the poem after experiencing um, a new freedom when I heard Tom Gadi reading his uh, Broken German in Berlin. And I said to myself, why don't I leave my Hebrew writing for one minute or my English writing and write a whole poem in the way I, I think without stopping. And, And in the start, it was kind of like light, you know, I, I, I played with the English and Arabic and, and German. And in the end, it became really deeper. And, in, and, and to my amazement, it's also you, uh, your book, your anthology uh, with Tanzen und Nicht Vergessen was, uh, uh, went into the words, kind of in a dialogue. Uh, why can I dance and not forget? And, um, and I'm saying that I cannot dance because there's a kind of, Uh, um, um, a Torah, um, a, Torah a, a Torah book burning in my in my stomach. Um, um, the street cities. Um, the they they deal with the with the history of your family also. Your yeah, family. yeah. It's a, it's it's the Jewish history. I mean, uh, um, yeah. On one hand, I'm not a European Jew, so I I don't I don't have any history in Berlin, or I wasn't. Uh, directly affected by the, the World War II in, 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 the, in the extent of the European Jews uh, that were massacred. And, but, um, but still, to be a Jew in Berlin, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's reminds me not only the direct uh, past of Berlin, but also um, the whole story of, of being a Jew and uh, moving from place to place um, and uh, being outside of... Uh, Being an outsider that wants to get inside, I think, kind of. So uh, the book is written in different languages. So let's say there are poems in uh, Hebrew, of course, in Arab Arabic also, yeah. and in German. So yeah. it's really like a, a book of dialogue. And uh, especially the, the Baghdad uh, <laughs> background also has to deal with your family history. Yeah, um, first of all, to, to, to say... Um, thank you to Jan, Dr. Jan Kuhne, who, uh, who translated the book to German. Um, the only poem that I, I wrote in, book, in broken German, as I, uh, I use this term, uh, is the one that we heard just now, but most of um, the other poems are just translated to German, sitting one next to another. Um, yeah, Baghdad is a place that is very important for me. It's the place where my mother and my grandmother's family and my grandfather's family um, came from. My mother was born in Baghdad before uh, immigrating to Israel. Yeah. And it's a place of a long tradition of the Iraqi Jews that we, people say that it's, 
going until the, 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 the ruined temple when they discarded the Jews all over the, the world and the, part of the Jews went to Babylon and they wrote the, the Babylonic Talmud and we know the, the famous quote from the Babylon on the rivers of Babylon or, uh, we sat and, and wept when we remember Zion and uh, people also say here on the river of the Spre when we, we sat and wept when we uh, remember Zion because Zion is, uh, wasn't only conflict, uh, had a conflict in, in, in our times it also has a conflict in the past times and we know the hard story um, and it's, um, it was important to me to bring this, the story of Iraq uh, to Berlin and not forget it, not to... There's people, um, Israelis, who come to Berlin, Norbert, and they invent themselves newly and they don't want to... They want to make a cut between who they were in Israel and who they are, where, uh, who they are here now. But for me, it's, I don't want this cut. I want to bring yeah. my, my love to my grandmother and to my mother over here. Yeah. So, the most part of your life you lived in Haifa, yeah. which of course is a, a, Jewic, a, a Jewish, Arabic, uh, Muslim city. And now, be, due to the Corona lockdown, you couldn't go, I guess, to Israel for a long time. Yeah. How much do you miss Haifa? Or, now living in Kreuzberg, you have found your Haifa in Berlin. <laughs> um. Well, I, uh, I miss it um, terribly because I just lost my grandmother and I couldn't go to our yeah. grave and to, to, to be the, in the funeral. And it's a very private moment that, I, uh, that uh, hurts me a lot. And I wrote some poems and uh, I'm writing a lot of poems for her. And for only for this moment I cried, you know, it's, uh, it's hard. Um, I, in the poem, I, I just wrote a poem and I said, um, it's, it's, I, I, we know there's thousands of kilometers between Israel and, uh, and, and, and Berlin, and, and this is the, 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 the times I'm crying for her, a thousand cries for my grandmother. Um, yeah, um, but still I had the chance to be in Israel just in the last moment of the coronavirus, before the corona lockdown in Israel and in Deutschland, and I had a chance to uh, even celebrate my uh, publication of an article book that just went out and was published in Israel. So I, 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 I should say, and also I had a chance to say goodbye to my grandmother in the last day that she was in her house. I was wow. with my kid there and my wife. So I have to also mention that not only the bad things, but only the, the grace of God that I got. Mm -hmm. And. You are married to a German wife yeah. and uh, you, you, a Berliner, a, Berliner, a yeah. real Berliner, yeah. yeah. And uh, and the two of you have got a baby here in Berlin, yeah. so there's a new kind of family uh, growing up here. Yeah, it's a it's a real new experience that made me made me rethink about everything in my life, uh, being a father and being a father to a German kid that has a German passport, <laughs> uh, something that I don't have. <laughs> And um, yeah, it's a, and living with a German wife, I think it's different from a lot of couples who are um, expats or uh, um, in more specific ways, Israelis who are living here as a couple, uh, yeah. men and women. And I'm, I feel that I really live the German time uh, in terms of holidays and, and uh, everything that happens with the German world. Um, so I... Um, I don't feel outsider in the city, actually, and uh, yeah, I, sometimes I forget that she's German. <laughs> sometimes yeah. it's, uh, it's, we have uh, conflicts and, uh, yeah. and we, um, we find different values and mentality that stands between us. Yeah. But we have to mention maybe that Charlotte also has a big bond to Israel and yeah. a, a long history, you know. Um, and she speaks Hebrew very well. She, so. <laughs> So, but talking about this family stuff, how do your parents feel like that you are a writer in Berlin yeah. now? I mean, I, th I think yeah, that your grandmother was the one that supported you mostly. It, yeah. it feels like there's a strong bond. Yeah, there's a strong bond with me and me and my grandmother because my grandmother was my gay to Baghdad. I wasn't ever, I, I cannot go as an Israeli to Baghdad and also as an Israeli who lives in Berlin. Uh, there's all the all the places where my family uh, immigrated to Israel are close to me as a citizen of Israel and 
uh, with an Israeli passport. Um, so to me, my grandmother was the gate to Baghdad. I could still, through her memories, enter the city and understand the beauty of it, the, eating fish on the Tigris, on the place where all civilization went out of, of, of Babylon. Um, my mother is a... Yeah, we, we share a lot of love together, but uh, we have different political stance towards my, uh, my, uh, my, my social and political kind of uh, um, consciousness. Um, so uh, my grandmother was more open to, uh, to, uh, to, to let me enter the Iraqi consciousness, and my mother was more reluctant, um, in, so to say. Um, yeah, my mother is very open about Berlin. She's very open about Germany. She uh, accepted uh, Charlotte immediately. She was very, very happy because she waited so many years. Think about it, Norbert. I, I, uh, I got married at the age of uh, 43. And so uh, she waited so many years. She went to so many weddings and, and <laughs> until people can go to her son's wedding. What kind of wedding did you do? Um, we, uh, we did the Staden, Stadenabend, the, the local wedding here in Berlin. My yeah. mother came with my two sisters. And, and then we went to a, to a lake and have a, so, a dinner. But then we, then we did also in Israel in 2016 um, in Haifa. And the family of Charlotte came. And, uh, and that was kind of odd because all my friends came from Tel Aviv to see my wife and to celebrate <laughs> me. And people I didn't see for a long time because most of the time I'm here. Uh, but there was a loyalty of community. Um, the big part of it were poets. And uh, yeah. uh, even two uh, 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 members of the uh, Knesset came because they are friends of mine. My ex-girlfriend, Tammy Zandberg, and uh, Yossi Yona from the uh, Mizrahi Democratic Rainbow. Um, and... Um, and, and, and Charlotte, at uh, the end of the, of the ceremony, it was 30 degrees, Haifa, you know, everybody's hot. And she said, Mati, look, there's so many poets here, why don't they read something? And so I asked the poets and they agreed, and so they read the poems. In the end of my uh, marriage, it was really beautiful. <laughs> and in the end, it, we said to the people who want to come with us to, to swim. So we just took our clothes uh, and crossed to the beach with five minutes uh, oh, yeah. by car, and we, everybody, Swim together, swim together, uh, yeah. swim together, yeah. Haifa Beach. Yeah, so. And poems at Haifa Beach. Well, I would say, we talked about poets. Yeah. I want to hear another poem from you. Ah, please. So, you know, we are talking still about leaving Israel. So, I read a short poem that was for my fifth poetry book, which is called The Last Tango in Berlin. And it's about, it's exactly the, mo the feeling of before being with Charlotte, before, uh, um, before uh, it really catches the moment of separation as a Hebrew writer. Uh, I read it in I read it in Hebrew and in Deutsch, and uh, so I start with the Hebrew. Amilim al Aziva, Ashir yatchilod meat li polki. Azavti et chayeh apigdonot limtzo chayim chadashim be Berlin. Dibarti anglit shvura, chamisha shkalim le euro. סגרתי את הטלפון היהודי, נפרדתי מאמי, מספריי, מאותיות אהבות חיי, חבריי. דיבורטה פרום פרלסן, דס גדישט פנקט גלייש אן צופלן, דן אופגב איש מיין ליבן, אופפן. נויס ליבן צופינדן אין ברלין, שפרח גבוכן אינגליש. Deutsch, Hebräisch, 5 Schekel vor einem Euro, habe die jüdische Leitung gekappt, mich von Mutter getrennt, von meinen Buchern, von der Liebe meines Lebens, den Buchstaben, meine Freunde. Great. I really love your poems. Thank you. And I love you reading them in Hebrew because I, I really, it's so poetic to me. I, I understand a little bit, but <laughs> not really, you know, the, yeah. so especially poetry is difficult to understand always. So this so. book is uh, for you because it says always the, yeah. you can read the German version of it. Yeah. This book is not only for me, it's really for all German readers and of course also for 
readers in Israel, of Mati and uh, yeah. everyone. I mean, because it's so beautiful to have these two opportunities to, to yeah, to read both uh, versions of it side by side. And, and the translations of Jan Kühne is really, really great. So and he's a poet by himself, yeah. yeah. And, and I should say, uh, well, maybe um, add that it's a collection of, of uh, six books uh, that... Um, so we have like poems from, from different areas, from 2001, my first poetry book, until 2019, because we have a new poem that was written in the end. So, uh, yeah, it's a... Uh, I, I, we know in the start it wasn't a bilingual book. Uh, let me tell you a secret. It was a... Uh, we thought that it's going to be like 60 poems, which is 10 poems from each book. Um, but... After Jan Kuhne did the translation, my editor, uh, uh, Rainer um, Winkel uh, Maria, um, the, the, ed the chief editor of Forisma Verlag, he, uh, he came with the idea that it, should, it must be bilingual. And you know, I'm a poet, so I'm, my loyalty is to the poems. And I said, what? what? He, he just did so many poems. So what, what's going to be doing? Uh, and... Um, but he explained me and we did some kind of agreement because there was a lot of give and take uh, between us and uh, today I'm very much proud of his yeah. work and his idea and his vision because uh, it wasn't right if it was only German translation. It, was, it should be Hebrew um, because, you know, between World War II and World War I there was um, the, the, the Hebrew community of the writers, not only, the, I mean, the Yiddish, everybody knows that there were Yiddish writers in Berlin but uh, nobody knows that there was a big culture, Hebrew culture in Berlin that was, yeah. there was much more publishers of Hebrew um, novels and, and poems than in Israel itself. It was at that time called Palestine, uh, Palestina. And so there's kind of, a, so to publish a, book, a bilingual book or even to, to look at it as a Hebrew book in Berlin, it's to revive the Hebrew center, the Hebrew literary center of Berlin after years of, of quiet. And now you, people come and can say, ah, there was trans no, there was other people who were translated. But now we're not talking about translation to Hebrew. We're talking about me writing here the book yeah. and, and living here and performing with it. And so for me, it's, uh, it's honoring the past. It's not only... Uh, you know, uh, honoring my own kind of uh, poetic uh, writing, it's, it's also gives, uh, I stand on the shoulders of giants that were creating here, Eric Meisen and so many people, uh, uh, Muslim and other people who created the wonderful literature and died. Well, this poem you just read about leaving Israel, I think it's also about living a life that you had uh, as a, you know, with a special identity in Israel, being a Mizrahi Jew, which is something we do not know so much about here in Germany. And now, having shifted to Berlin, does this identity still affect you, or is it more the Jewish identity in itself that? plays the, the biggest part for you? Well, I think it's both. I think, um, um, you know, I cannot pretend that I'm a European Jew, like most of the Jews here in Berlin. So it's important to me when they've been asked, I tell no, my, my grandmother was born in Iraq and my mother was born in Iraq and uh, my father came from, from uh, Syria and Iran. So it's important to me to 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 me to to represent it in front of the German readers and public that they know that um, half of the Jews in Israel uh, are Arab Jews or Jews from Islamic states and um, nevertheless you are very right that uh, when I came to Berlin uh, everything changed in terms of this identity because this identity in Israel was a political identity that I used in order to uh, confront the regime and ask for representation in the universities and in the curriculum in the uh, uh, because for instance 12 years of my life in Israel I never learned about Baghdad or or Damascus or other places where my family came from I learned only about Europe so 
Um, here my, my task is different. Is You are right that I become more Jewish and less... The ethnicity is not so important, but nevertheless, you know, I'm organizing even literary evenings with um, 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 Arab writers and Jewish writers, but um, we, we also give, we also talk about the specific life that we want shared in the Arab world. For instance, I, I, we're playing a project now of three cities. We have uh, Baghdad and Tehran and, and Tel Aviv, uh, and we talk about what, hap- what, was sh- what we shared in the long history of Jews and Arabs in the Middle East. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it's, it's, it's kind of, I'm using the life in Berlin when I can meet uh, uh, um, Iraqi people or other people from Arab states um, and using it to connect it to the life that I had in Israel, but through the Berlin story, kind of. So you also are giving lectures from the Torah at the synagogue sometime. Yeah. Um, so is this something you came up with here in Berlin? Did you do this in Israel? What did, I mean, add this life here to your Jewish, Jewishness? Yeah, uh, to tell you the truth, I was living more than 15 years in Tel Aviv, but I couldn't find my own synagogue because sometimes synagogues are very conservative or I don't know. I, I found a community in Frankel Ufer in, in, in Berlin and became part of it. And part of it was uh, to enter the, the sages. They, uh, they like my knowledge, they like my. Uh, and they let me um, teach. Uh, uh, it's, it's not like a f- formal, it's not a. They have. Um, every, the, every Shabbat they have, a, they have the, 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 the rabbi uh, teaching the. Um, the community, but after the rabbi finishing the prayers, um, the more young people staying and teach themselves about uh, the Torah portion. And yeah, I did it five times until today, and I'm very proud. I learned a lot, and I um, it's not far away from my house. I also some, uh, going with my kid over there, and it's something that uh, another gift that I got from Berlin. I got a synagogue and a place that I feel part of it, and. Uh, I see myself part of it, and I'm very much uh, connected also to the leaders of this community, uh, Dekel and Nina Peretz, and the child, yeah. Rania. Well, they're, they're really great well, people, yeah. 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 Um, but maybe you try to explain again what it is like to be Jewish in Berlin, I mean, especially in this neighborhood where you live in, yeah. because this is, sometimes it seems to some people also like a, a little utopia, because of this living together, but then you also can say it's a parallel gesellschaft, it's a parallel world between mm-hmm. the Arabic people, the German nightlife people, the old Berliners, the new Israelis there, yeah. and of course also with the German history yeah. in, in the back, which yeah. is there. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of questions, and I'll try to answer it uh, slowly by slowly. So. Um, when you when you immigrate to a new city, you have a chance to a new country. Uh, you you can de- uh, you can decide what you live in the old place and what you can take, and um, um, and the things that uh, happening. I mean, I uh, I decided that uh, um, that I won't be uh, an activist as I was in Israel, um, and then it's very important for me to keep. Connect, connected connection to to the language so of course the synagogue is a place where you can connect to the language and to the traditions and now as a father it's very very important for me so it's kind of a very mixed uh, community and the people of the synagogue um, let's say the leaders of the synagogues are afford this kind of mixture of people sometimes um, like me the child never converted but still I'm living with her and they're not rejecting us as a couple or, or rejecting our kids. So it's very important that they are liberal enough to, to uh, uh, let us be, enjoy the traditions as part of the community. Now in the, in the widened story of Neukölln and Kreuzberg, well, I'm, as a writer, you know, I I'm, I'm, I'm never close my eyes to the depths and sometimes to the abyss also. So yeah, there is a tension, there is a moments when when things doesn't go right, I can tell you uh, one time when I went with uh, Anno, my German friend, 
to a hummus place in Neukölln and a young Palestinian guy heard that I'm talking Hebrew and he didn't want me to sit next to him. Um, but it's, it's part of the tension. Nevertheless, uh, I can also tell you how I have a new friendship of a friend that is a Palestinian and Jordanian and uh, Egyptian uh, that I learned only here. I never had uh, any uh, uh, Jordan, Jordanian friends in Israel, so it's a gift of uh, Neukölln and, and Kreuzberg. Uh, so you have both, you know, you can, you can choose where you want to look. Uh, and um, my, I, it's not only choose where you want to look, also as a, as a writer, as an as a organizer of literary events and part of my literary groups that I'm part of, Poetic Hafla and Anu, Jews and, and Arabs writing in Berlin, I not only try to, uh, to be part of it, I also try to recreate it. So I, I did 19 uh, events part of Poetic Hafla, which were a lot of them were Jews and Arabs reading together, um, from all, all over the Middle East, and so we, we created a Middle Eastern um, world within within ourselves, with our words and and trust. You know, I have friends that came from poetic Hafla, like Musa Abdul Qadir, is a Kurdish uh, that grew up in Syria, a writer that lives in Berlin for a long time, and um, yeah. So um, so I'm trying to also establish the the idea of the bridge that Berlin gives us and to, to investigate into it. Um, yeah, you asked me about the past. Um, well, you know, in the Holocaust day, they always call me from Galet uh, Sal. It's the army radio, but it's a very popular radio in Israel because I was once part of, a, um, I was contributing my knowledge about black protest and um, in some known show there, uh, two years I was every week going to, to, to talk in a radio show. And so they called me and they asked me in the, in the Holocaust Day, so how do you feel today in the Holocaust Day, you're living in Germany, in Berlin, where the monster was uh, rising, uh, to, you know, uh, showed the face and so on. And I told them, you know, you call me now in the Holocaust Day, but, um, but living as a Jew in Berlin, it's an everyday task. You never forget the past. It's never, it's always, even in when the best moments of, like now, when the 30 degrees and everybody's out and drinking, you always ask yourself, how could it be that like, when you drive, when, I, when I'm on my bike, I'm asking myself, how can this beautiful city had such a bad moments, you know? A temple of the, one of my beloved places in Berlin, when I fully believe that it's a spiritual, it's, it's the same place where Hitler w was walking with Schaeffer and Goebbels. So, yeah, it's there and it's, it's a ever, 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 uh, it's a question that always comes back to me. And I express it in my writing uh, and I, I try to, uh, to connect to the ghosts of the city and give them respect and, to, uh, and also to uh, thank the new Germany and so, and also to, uh, um, to stand in front of the gingers today with the, the rise of the IFT and Pegida movement. Well, Mati, uh, I have to thank you, not only for this talk, but also really like for living here, because I mean, it is so important for Berlin that people like you, especially also poets, <laughs> live here in, well, in, in Germany you, from Israel. You, thank you uh, for uh, being a friend, such a good cool friend. And uh, I guess it's, uh, it's part of the the story of Berlin, because let's see the, the broader picture. It, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a safe city for not only me, but to a lot of refugees and, and people who are running away from horrors from all over the world. So I think it's part of the, the immigration story of Berlin. It's part of a bigger story of people who, who are trying to make the world better and sometimes uh, finding a way that they cannot do it anymore and they have to run away. And, so the coming here and the, it's a place where nobody, be, nobody should be afraid to say that he's an immigrant. And, uh, yeah, absolutely. And, but I think in these times we have to keep the spirit up. I mean, and that's, that's really so important. And, and, and you contribute also with the poetic halfway that you mentioned um, to it a lot. So I also would really recommend to go to the poetic Hafla when it's back on, because of course of now uh, all these events, um, it was paused, um, 
but it will be on again. And of course, I would love to recommend the book of Mati Shmuel of Baghdad Haifa Berlin, published in Aphorisma Publishing House. And uh, yeah, of course, I would love to hear another poem. Yeah, let's do it. Yudi Aravi in Berlin. אני פחות שואל שאלות, יותר מתמסר לג'אז של ברלין, שמגיע מגלויות שונות, בלילה מטפס על חלונות נשים, בבוקר בעבודות פרך, ובשבת עם המילים הקדושות, מדבר לעצמי בעברית ללא ארץ, מדבר לאחרים באחרות ללא ארץ, ונעדרתי מהשכרה של אבי, ונזכרתי בו בכל מילה ממילותיי, איני יודע מאיפה באתי ולאן אני הולך. אבל גם לזרות יש רגע הולדת, ואתעורר בזרועות, בגפיים ארוכים, בזיכרונות, כילד. אני יודי שיראבר אין ברלין, איש תלה וניגר פראגן, גפ מיש מרדן ברלין ג'אזין, דר אוס פרשינדינן דיאספורן אנגקומנה. שטייגה נחץ אוף Frauenfenster, Molach morgens, am Schabbat den mit den eiligen Worten, Hebräisch Selbstgespräche selbst ohne Land, anders spre sprechen mit anderen ohne Land, und ich fällte bei der Ged Gedenkefeier meines Vaters und ich gedachte ihm mit jedem meiner Worte. Wo ich kam, wo ich gehe, das weiß es nicht. Doch auch Fremdheit wurde einst geboren, wenn ich einst aufwache umarmt von langen Gleitmassen in den Erinnerung als Kind. Mati, thank you so much. And now, of course, I want you to sign my Polaroid picture. Ja. Yeah. <laughs> in Hebrew? שתיים, שלוש, עד צבאי דריי פוליצאי. נינה הגן. אוקיי. קלאפ. ואתה רוצה להשווה את הבוק? נו דברייט, און דברייט. ברלין. תני לי לכתוב ברחמך את הרומן הראשון שלי. תני לי לגמור בתוכך את סיפור, שירה, הגירה שלי. תני לי עוד קצת מהעלים הנמסים אל תוך שירת השלג השחור. ברלין, איך הבשר שלי קורם אור וגרמנית שבורה, ואיך הבשר שלך משחרר אותי מרווקותי. תני לי עוד קצת מהאותיות שאת מצמיחה. אחרי קרבות החורף בין געגועים, בין מדינות, בין זהויות, בין משפחות, בין בתים, בין ספרים, בין שפות. כי מעולם לא הפסקתי להיות בהגירה אל הלב. ברלין. לאס מיש אין דיין שוס מיינם אסטן רומנט שרייבן. לאס מיש אין דיר קומן די גשיכטה מיינר פואזי מיגרציון פול אנדן. גב מי אנוך אין פאר דר אין דן שוורצה שני שמלצן דן בלטר. ברלין ויר וי או וי פון אאוט אובר צוגן איסט מיין גביין und von gebrochen Deutsch. Wie dein Fleisch mich aus meiner Ledigkeit erlost, gib mir nur noch ein paar der Buchstaben, die du lasst gediehen, nach Winterschlachten zwischen Sehnsucht und Sehnsucht, zwischen Ländern, zwischen Zugehörigkeiten, zwischen Familien, zwischen Hausen, zwischen Buchen, zwischen Sprachen, denn niemand hörte auf ich auszuwenden, Herz wird's.